Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sneha and welcome to the Perio Hub. So today we will talk about another very important basic structure of the periodontium which is the periodontal ligament. So periodontal ligament fibers are these fibers which form a meshwork and it stretches between two tissues. So we have the alveolar bone on one end. So this is the alveolar bone on one end and secondly we have the root cementum. So it stretches between the root cementum and the alveolar bone. Uh, so let's talk about the definition of the periodontal ligament. Now glossary of periodontal terms defines periodontal ligament as a connective tissue that surrounds and attaches the root of the teeth to the alveolar bone. Now it's a very simple definition but still let's break this definition down. So the first part of the definition states that it is a connective tissue. Till now we have spoken in great detail about the epithelial aspect. So we have spoken about the junctional epithelium, the sulcular and the oral epithelium. So now we are talking a bit more in the interior aspect about the connective tissue. And this connective tissue surrounds the uh, surrounds and attaches the roots uh, of the teeth. So right here is the root of the teeth uh, that is the root cementum. So it attaches the root cementum to the alveolar bone. So if we take a cross section of the human dentition and observe it under a light microscope, then we can see this particular uh, microscopic aspect. So here we can see two mineralized aspects. So we can see the bone on one end and the uh, cementum on the other end. And interposed between the bone and the cementum is the periodontal ligament. So this it forms the union between the bone and the cementum and it is collagenous in nature and it forms a meshwork. So because it is present between the bone and the cementum, the basic functions of the periodontal ligament is to offer support, it offers protection and it uh, has certain sensory innervation uh, to facilitate the process of mastication. So now let's talk about the tree of evolution of the periodontal ligament and uh, see how exactly is this structure so important. So if we talk about the ancestral reptiles and concentrate on their dentition, it is seen that the teeth are directly ankylosed to the underlining bone, which means the teeth is attached to the underlining bone. So if we see a skeletal view, we can appreciate that here the bone is made up of segments which are then united with the help of sutures. And the innermost segment is also called the dentary uh, because it harbors the dentition uh, and these teeth are attached directly to the bone. Now the process of evolution brought about a radicular shift in the uh, jaws and uh, later in case of mammals, it is seen that the teeth are suspended in the bony socket and this socket is termed as the gomphosis. So the teeth are attached to the alveolar bone or the bone through a ligament space and this ligament is the periodontal ligament. So this is how the concept of the periodontal ligament came into picture. Now because of the presence of the periodontal ligament fibers, the teeth and the bone are separate units in case of uh, the mammals whereas it was a single unit in case of reptiles. Now in uh, for us if we try and place braces the teeth would move but the bone would not and this is only brought about uh, because of the presence of PDL which further makes the remodeling of the periodontium possible. So now let's talk about the various names which are given uh, to the periodontal ligament. Now there are many authors who have done their studies on the periodontal ligament and they came up with different names and uh, it is very important that we understand these terms as well. So the periodontal ligament is also called as the periodontal membrane. It is also called as the alveolodental ligament. It is called as the desmodont, um, the pericementum the gomphosis and the dental periosteum. So uh, these uh, terms are very important uh, for us to understand because they are the synonyms which are given to the periodontal ligament. Now let's talk about a very important aspect which is the development of the periodontal ligament. Now the development of the periodontal ligament is a part of the development of the tooth and we have uh, seen uh, the development of the teeth in a prior video. 
and I would link that video somewhere on the screen. Basically, the periodontal ligament fibers develop uh, during the root formation and it occurs prior to the teeth erupting into the oral cavity. So this histological picture is a picture of the bell stage of tooth development. So in this particular stage, we see the various layers. So we see the outermost layer of oral mucosal cells. And then we see the enamel organ right here. The cells of the enamel organ differentiate by the bell stage. So we have this layer which is also called as the outer enamel epithelium. And right here, we have the cells which are called as the inner enamel epithelium. And then we have the next tissue which is called as the dental papilla. And surrounding the dental papilla, we have the tissue called as the dental sac or the dental follicle. So we saw the enamel organ. So this gives rise to the enamel. Dental papilla gives rise to the dentine. And the dental follicle gives rise to three major important tissues that is the bone, alveolar bone, it gives rise to cementum and it gives rise to periodontal ligament. So we will be discussing in great detail about the dental follicle today. So before that if we progress from the bell stage to the advanced bell stage, so this is the advanced bell stage, we can see that the uh, Inner enamel epithelial cells have differentiated into ameloblast and started the deposition of enamel. And on the other hand, the cells of the dental papilla, the most superficial cells of the dental papilla have also differentiated itself into odontoblast and started the deposition of dentine. So the ameloblast is synthesizing enamel and the odontoblast is secreting dentine. Now towards one corner where the inner and the outer enamel epithelium will meet, so this particular area will give rise to something called as the cervical loop. Now cervical loop is very important for the developing root. So if we see a zoomed in picture of uh, this particular area which is the cervical loop, then we observe that the cervical loop progressively uh, progressively increases and gives rise to something called as the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath or HERS. Now as the name suggests it's a root sheath and that's the reason it plays great importance in the development of the root and uh, right adjacent to the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath we have the dental follicle. Now the dental follicle consists of two subpopulation of cells so the first type of cells are the mesenchymal cells of the dental follicle proper. So these are the cells which are present right adjacent to the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. And whereas the second population is termed as the perifollicular mesenchyme. So these cells are present away from the root sheath. Now the mesenchymal cells of the dental follicle proper gives rise to the cementum. Whereas uh, the perifollicular mesenchyme gives rise to the developing periodontal ligament. So let's uh, now discuss about the perifollicular mesenchymal cells. So during the process of the root formation, uh, these perifollicular mesenchymal cells gains polarity. So the cells which are small and round initially, it becomes elongated with increase in mitochondria, the rough endoplasmic reticulum and increase in the cellular volume. So basically they become cellularly very active and start forming collagen uh, fibrils. Now the whole process of how the cells forms the collagen is a topic on its own and we'll discuss this sometime later. So till now we saw that the mesenchymal cells of the dental follicle proper are present just adjacent to the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath and the uh, collagen fibers are being laid down by the perifollicular cells. Now, during the process of root formation, there is a stage when the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath would rupture. So, after the rupture of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, the mesenchymal cells of the dental uh, follicle proper changes in orientation. So, initially, as you can see, they are present parallel to the root surface after which they change orientation and they become perpendicular to the root, root surface and the nucleus of the cells gain polarity 
towards the dentine. So this here is the root dentine which is being laid down and the polarity of these cells is towards the root dentine. And once there is change in the orientation of these uh, cells, even the collagen fibers which were initially parallel to the root surface now become perpendicular to the root surface. So this change in orientation is brought about once the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath rupture takes place. So once the rupture has occurred, mesenchymal cells of the dental follicle proper help in the deposition of root cementum. So this right here, there is the deposition of cementum that takes place and on the other hand, the alveolar bone is formed and between the alveolar bone and the root cementum, the periodontal ligament fibers start forming. So initially, small fibrils of uh, periodontal ligaments start arising from the root cementum following which the uh, small fibr fibrils also start arising from the alveolar bone. Now the fibrils arising from the alveolar bone will radiate towards the midpoint of the periodontal ligament space in a much faster rate as compared to the root cementum. But ultimately the fibers which are arising from the root cementum also increase in length and they migrate towards the center of the PDL space and finally, finally merge with the fibers from the opposite end. So to quickly recapitulate what we saw in this basic introductory video about periodontal ligament, we spoke about the introduction of periodontal ligament, we spoke about the uh, definition given by the glossary of periodontal terms, we spoke about the evolution of the periodontal ligament and how exactly did the concept of the periodontal ligament came into picture. Then we spoke about the development of the periodontal ligament, we spoke about the cervical loop, we spoke about um, the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, we spoke about the two populations of the cells which are coming from the dental follicle and which population exactly gives rise to the periodontal ligament. So I hope uh, this introductory video on periodontal ligament was helpful and useful and if it was, do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and uh, I also take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy Diwali and we'll meet next with the part 2 broadcast on the PDL and until we do so, take good care of yourself. This is Periohub signing off.